Today we'll talk about classifying real numbers. Now you've learned and seen many different kinds of real numbers in the past. Here are some of the examples coming up on the screen. There are different classes of real numbers and these we call subsets. They're categorized by certain characteristics each of these numbers has. The natural numbers, represented by this funny looking N, has, is the set of all positive whole numbers. When I say whole numbers, I mean numbers who have written as a decimal would be something like 3.00 as many zeros as you wanted to write. The integers, represented by the big funny Z, this is a set of all positive and negative whole numbers and the number zero, which is neither positive nor negative. We have rational numbers. The symbol for the rational numbers is the big funny Q. Any real number that can be written as A divided by B, where A and B are integers and B is not equal to zero, is a rational number. And the irrational numbers or any real number that is not a rational number. We look at the subsets of the real numbers in a Venn diagram. You see the real numbers are all contained in this box. Inside the box we have the set of rational numbers, the red circle, the letter Q, and inside of that circle are all of the integers, the blue circle with the number, letter Z. And inside of the integers, we have all of the natural numbers, represented by the letter N. Now, outside of all of these circles, we have the irrational numbers. This does not indicate that the rational numbers are part of the irrational numbers. You can see from this Venn diagram that any number that is contained in the natural numbers is also contained in the integers and is also contained in the rational numbers. Any number that is contained in the integers is also contained in the rational numbers. This is what we'll use to classify different real numbers. Let's look at the natural numbers and the integers first. Natural numbers and integers are easy to distinguish. Remember, any positive whole number is a natural number. So when you see a positive whole number, you should recognize that as a natural number. The integers are all the positive or negative whole numbers in zero. So any positive, negative whole number in zero that you see, you can classify that as an integer. Now, Answer this true or false statement. Every integer is also a natural number. Think back to the Venn diagram. For this to be true, the set of integers would have to be contained within the set of natural numbers. The answer is false. The set of integers was bigger than the set of natural numbers. What about this one? Every natural number is also an integer. Again, think back to the Venn diagram. This statement is true because the circle that contained the natural numbers was completely contained within the circle that contained the integers. So let's try some. Looking at these numbers on the slide, identify the numbers that are natural numbers or integers and place them in the correct part of the Venn diagram you see below. The number 0 by definition is an integer. The number 3 falls in the natural numbers. It's a positive whole number. The number negative 43 is a whole number but it's a negative whole number so it falls in the set of integers. The natural numbers also contains the number the square root of 49. The question is why is the square root of 49 placed in with the natural numbers? The 
answer, of course, is because we can write the square root of 49 as the number 7. Let's look at the rational and the irrational numbers. How do we classify these? All integers are natural numbers are also rational numbers. We saw that in the Venn diagram. If we look at the rational numbers that aren't integers or natural numbers, any number that satisfies the definition we gave earlier, of course, is a rational number. Numbers like one-half, three-fourths, seven-thirds, those are both written in the form a divided by b with a and b integers and b not equal to zero. If we look at numbers in decimal form, this is where it can be more tricky. Any terminating decimal, like the number 3.14159, is a rational number. A terminating decimal is one that has a finite number of decimal places. In this case, we have five decimal places the number ends or terminates. So this is a terminating decimal. 3.1 would be a terminating decimal. 3.14, 3.141. As long as the decimal doesn't go on forever, it's a terminating decimal and as such is a rational number. Any infinite repeating decimal, like the number 2.178, where the 78 repeats, that is also a rational number. Anytime you see a, ra a repeating decimal, you know that is a, you can recognize that as a rational number. The irrational numbers. Any irreducible radical. The square root of 2 cannot be reduced. Anytime you try to write the square root of 2 as a ra as a in decimal form, it's an approximation. You cannot write the square root of 2 as an exact number in decimal form because the decimal goes on forever. It never terminates or ends and it never repeats. Numbers that we've seen in other classes such as E or Pi, these are well-known, often used, irrational numbers. Written out in decimal form, it's in, they're infinite decimals and never repeat. And when we see numbers in decimal form, any infinite non-repeating decimal is an example of an irrational number. In your book, of course, we can't write an infinite number of places after the decimal. So in your book, you will see these represented three in the form 3.14159 and then three dots that represent the number goes on it does not stop, but you cannot establish a pattern inside the numbers you see. When you see this, your book is indicating that this is an irrational number. So let's try this with rational and irrational numbers. The same Venn diagram we had before, only now we see the rational numbers encompassing the integers and the natural numbers. So we look at the numbers at the top of the page and we see which would fall into the rational numbers. Repeating decimal, negative 3.65. That fell into the category of the rational numbers. 45 sevenths, a number that's written in the form A divided by B, where A and B are integers and B is not zero, is a rational number by definition. The number negative one-fourth, same as 45 sevenths, it's a number A over B, where A and B are integers, and B is not equal to zero. And then we have the number 5.5. That also, it's a terminating decimal, which falls in the categories of the rational numbers. And we look at the, at the numbers that are left, and we see the square root of 7, pi, e, negative square root of 3 over 2, and pi over 6. None of these can be written as a terminating decimal. They can't be written as a repeating decimal. They're infinite non-repeating decimals if we try to write them in decimal form. Therefore, all five of these 
or examples of irrational numbers.